Hello everybody and welcome back to Toy to You Curator's Corner. This is episode number three. Uh, carrying on from an earlier one where we looked at the very first historic photograph of Dunedin and then we carried on from that to consider one of the buildings in the picture which was the Mance from which Mance Street gets its name. Well today we're going to move a little bit to the right and we're also going to go back a little bit further in time to 1849. So let's get into it. Now that 1857 photograph leaves nine years of development from when the early settlers first landed in Dunedin in March and April of 1848. But even if there are no photographs from that period, there are drawings and there are written accounts to tell us about what they got up to in that time. Personally, I'm fascinated by the way that the pioneers had to build the city from scratch. Something I think we tend to forget about as we walk its smooth, tarmac and gentle rolling inner city streets today. But if we could peel back the layers to see what it was like when they started, what would we see? Well, let's go back to this plan from 1855, which shows the original shoreline along Princess Street. Before it was filled in, and the inner harbour was reclaimed to create Crawford Street in the early 1860s. This section of the plan shows some of the buildings that we talked about in episode 1, and that appear in that 1857 photograph. Number three is Johnny Jones's store, and number four, the Otago Witness Office. Now, moving to the right, we see that number five is Captain Cargill's office. Number six, Peter Proudfoot, the surveyors. Number seven, the survey office. And number eight, a smithy and slaughterhouse. And finally, number nine on this plan, the Mechanics Institute, a really important building that opened in January of 1853, and about which I'll possibly talk in a future episode. But for today, I want to focus on this drawing, depicting some of the key buildings in this area in 1849. Now, unfortunately, I don't know who sketched the scene, or who later added the annotations. I was in a rush when I picked out what resources to grab before the lockdown began, and I didn't get the index of the images. But it's a really fascinating glimpse, nonetheless, at the heart of Dunedin within the first year of arrival. At that point, the original town survey was still going on, led by Charles Kettle, whose house you can see depicted here, along with its location, identified as being near the chief post office, or the Distinction Hotel as it is now. Now, Kettle had been on site since 1846, so that house actually predates the arrival of the settlers. According to this, he seems to have been sharing office premises with Captain Cargill, the leader of the settlement. So if this annotation is to be trusted, this spot might be considered the HQ of Pioneer Dunedin, where all the key decisions on its initial development must have been made. And then off to the right we have the government stores on the beach, by which I guess they mean the New Zealand Company stores, and from which all the early settlers would have drawn essential supplies until they found alternative sources as the town began to develop. But it's this detail that I find the most interesting, the impression of the shoreline itself. Here, just below Cargill's office with the boulders and the little track up from the beach, and even the bush around that office, and a little bit further right, you can see a boat pulled up on the sandy beach. Now that is primordial Dunedin as the settlers found it. And that's maybe worth thinking about the next time you're walking along Bond Street. Today, nice and flat, smooth, just a little bit down from Princess Street and hundreds of metres from the sea. But it took prodigious efforts by the pioneers to make it so. And this drawing reminds us of what it was like before they did so. Well, I hope you found that interesting and that it also was able to take you out of the constrictions of the present lockdown situation and back into uh, the interesting stories of Dunedin's past. If you enjoyed the episode, you might like to check out the earlier two and look forward to other ones that we'll do over the next few weeks as we continue to be trapped in our homes, but still free to roam in our minds back into the very interesting past of this wonderful city of ours, Dunedin.